Joshua challenged the people of Israel in Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods that your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's interesting that not only in challenging, challenging the Israelite nation, that the great leader Joshua let it be known to that entire nation of people, this is what we're going to do. This is what me and my family are going to do. We're going to serve the Lord. And one interesting thing also is that at that particular point in time, the people of Israel had the same idea. There were times that they demonstrated a great lack of faith in God. But at this point, they were willing to follow the Lord as well. Now you contrast that with quite some time later when the great prophet Elijah call upon the Israelites to make a choice. And in 1 Kings chapter 18, about verse 26, he asked them the question, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow Him. But if Baal, follow Him. And the Bible says that they answered Him not a word. At that later point in time, they couldn't make up their minds. They couldn't decide whose side they were going to be on. Whether the false god of Baal or the god of heaven, Jehovah. It is incumbent upon us as the Lord's people today to make the right choices. And in making choices, we should always understand and realize that God endowed His people God endowed every individual with the power of choice. He created man a free moral agent. He didn't create a machine. He didn't create robots with no emotion, no feeling whatsoever, no, no ability to even think. But He created man and endowed him with the ability to choose. And from that time on, man has made choices. Not every choice has been good, but man has made choices. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 26 through 28, God said to the Israelite nation through His prophet Moses, I have set before you this day a blessing and a curse. He said, a blessing if you will obey the commandments of the Lord your God, and a curse if if you turn aside from these commandments to serve the gods of man. He set before them a choice. Life is filled with choices. As a matter of fact, every day we make choices. Not all of those choices are good. Sometimes we make bad choices. But here's one thing that you and I need to understand about the choices that we make. And that is that choice, the choices that you and I make, affects the direction of our lives. That is true with every one of us. Doesn't matter of what age you are. Doesn't matter if you're older or if you're a young person. The choices that you make affects the direction of your life. And that's why it is so important that we begin when we're young in life. That's why we read in Ecclesiastes 11, beginning with verse 9, where the wise man said, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. Walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know this, that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. Childhood and youth are vanity. He goes into chapter 12 saying, Remember therefore thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh. And thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Well, for just a few moments this morning, 
I'd like for us to look at a man who is well known in the Bible. That is Moses. Moses made a great choice. He made some great decisions. We read about him in Exodus chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. And of course you go all the way through the book of Exodus. And as a matter of fact, the Holy Spirit also recorded some things about his faith in Hebrews 11, verses 24 through 27. And so then, as we look at Moses, let's think about the choices that he made. First of all, think about the fact that choice always involves more than one option. I really believe that goes without saying. Because if you think about the word choice, that word in and of itself implies that I have at least two different ways that I can decide. Think about Moses for a minute. In Hebrews 11, beginning with verse 24, the Bible says, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto, unto the recompense of reward. Now, Think about Moses for a moment and the choice that he made. Think about the options that were before him. First of all, he could continue to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And he could have all, he could have access to everything of a material and a worldly nature that would go along with that. Or he could align himself with the people of God. And that choice also would have certain implications. Now, he could have chosen to be raised to, co to continue to be in the house and to live in the house of Pharaoh's daughter. Or he could observe his heritage as one of the Hebrew nation. We know that his mother taught him about his heritage as one of God's people. If he had made the choice to continue to live in Pharaoh's house, he could have had access to riches beyond anything that you could ever imagine. He could also have access to worldly honor and acclaim. Something that many would love to have and would enjoy having. Or, on the other hand, in making the choice to align himself with God's people, he could have even greater riches. No, not material riches. Not things of a material and worldly nature, but rather spiritual riches. Riches that would be far, far more satisfying than anything of a material nature. So he had two choices before. One was bad, and one was good. On the one hand, one would involve sin. One would involve living in a house where there would be a multiplicity of gods which would be observed and recognized. Moses knew that. And then on the other hand, there was righteousness. He could choose to follow God. He could choose to be a servant of God and to observe righteousness in keeping the commandments of God and being the great leader that God wanted him to be. And let me tell you, the same is true with every one of us. We have choices, we make choices having to do with the flesh and the spirit. And as a matter of fact, in Romans or Galatians rather, chapter 5, in verse 17, Paul says, For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit. And the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. And in Romans chapter 7, the Apostle Paul wrote about this inward struggle, this inward battle between the flesh and the Spirit. One was trying to control the other. And he asked the question, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And then he answered, I thank God through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Now, we go back to Galatians 5. And even a few verses later, Paul talked about the works of the flesh in verses 19 through 21. And then following that, he talked about the fruit of the Spirit. 
in verses 22 through 23. So even in that context, Paul is presenting a choice to everyone who would read his words. On the one hand, you can observe the, the works of the flesh. <clears throat> On the other hand, the fruit of the Spirit. Well, there are always results. There are always consequences to choices. And there are always rewards to choices. Now, on the one hand, we realize that when you make a choice, then you've got to give something up. Again, remember that choices involve more than one option. So if you have two options before you, then you're going to give something up and you're going to choose the other. Now let me tell you something. That was true with Moses. Because he recognized that if he gave up being called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, then he would have to forfeit everything that went along with that. He would be an outcast. He would never again be able to return to Egypt and to live as he once did. He would have to give that up if he chose to be Pharaoh's daughter. He also recognized that if he chose to continue to be recognized as the son of Pharaoh's daughter, that he would have to give up his heritage as being one of God's people. You see, it was providential that Moses' mother was chosen to care for him when he was an infant and to raise him. And there's no doubt whatsoever that as he was being raised in the house of Pharaoh's daughter, that his own mother was teaching him about Jehovah. His own mother was teaching him about the Hebrew nation and letting him know, you're one of them. You're one of us. He came to recognize that. And he also knew that the choice that he made would have consequences and or rewards both now and in eternity. And let me tell you something, my friends. The same thing is true with all of us. The choices that we make each day as we said a few moments ago, will alter and will affect the, the direction of our lives. And we have to look or draw a comparison between what it will give us now and what it will give us in eternity. Moses understood that his choice was for a lifetime. There was no going back. There was no returning. And so then, as we look at the choice that, that, uh, that Moses made on this particular occasion, first of all, he chose ill treatment rather than the pleasures of sin. And as a matter of fact, in the context that we read a moment ago from Hebrews chapter 11, we read that he chose to suffer affliction with God's people than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You see, that's another thing that he understood. That is, the pleasures of sin are going to last for only a short time. And even if he chose to continue to, to, to remain in the house of Pharaoh's daughter, and having access to material riches and worldly honor and acclaim, even if he were to live a hundred years or a hundred plus years, and if he were to enjoy that worldly acclaim and worldly riches all of that time, then what about eternity? It would all be over. He knew that to suffer reproach was greater than to have riches in Egypt. Not everyone would make that choice. And so he looked then through the eyes of faith the words of David in Psalm 73 and verse 17, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood therein. And that's what Moses did. He looked at the end. He looked toward the end. And that helped him to make the right choice. Let's think about some of these implications. First of all, in Hebrews 11 and verse 26, 
he considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. And so what he did was decide that this was the better choice. I can stay in Egypt and I can have access to all of this, or I can suffer with the Hebrew nation and ultimately have eternal life. And so as far as he was concerned, there was only one choice that he could make. He looked at the big picture. He looked at the big picture. Not just at what the choice to remain in Egypt would provide for him then, and in his life here in the flesh, but he looked toward the end. And that enabled him to make the right choice. And so then, his choice was to refuse to any longer be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. You make a present day application for each one of us, we must also make the right choices. We must refuse sin. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And then look at the very next verse, verse 9. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. Can Satan be resisted? You better believe it. As a matter of fact, that's what James said in James chapter 4, verse 7. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We have to make the right choice. And so Moses then forsook Egypt. Now let me tell you what he knew that he had to do if he was going to forsake Egypt. He would have to leave it all behind. There would be no looking back. And that's what the Lord taught also in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24 when He said, No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And the rich young ruler came to realize this in Matthew chapter 19, and he didn't make the right choice, but he came to understand what the implications were. He came to Jesus inquiring of eternal life. Jesus told him to sell his riches and give to the poor. Come and follow him and he'd have treasure in heaven. And the Bible says that that young man turned and went away sorrowfully for he had great possessions. He came running to Jesus with all of the zeal of youth, with eagerness and enthusiasm. He came to the right source and he knew that he came to the right source to find out about eternal life but he couldn't let go of his riches. <clears throat> and so he went away sad. And I know I've said this before, but I've often wondered, and remember, this is not a parable in Matthew 19. It's a real story. It really happened. I've often wondered how that rich young ruler was able to live with himself from day to day knowing that he had made the wrong choices. Moses was able to make the right choice because of his faith. That's why you read about him in Hebrews 11 in the great hall of faith. He trusted God. And that involved things unseen. As a matter of fact, we read that he had recompense unto the reward. That is, he knew something about the reward that he would receive for making the right choice. And so it involved faith in God. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. How can you see a being who is invisible? <coughs> By faith. And so it is with us. We walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 
and verse 7. And so then Moses forsook those sure things that he could see for unseen things. We look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. That's what you and I are to have in our minds. And that's what you and I are to focus upon. Young people, that's what we're to focus on. That's where your mind should focus. There may be someone in this assembly who is not a Christian. And we encourage you to obey the gospel of Christ. Our Savior said in Mark 16 and 16, He that believeth that is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be condemned. If you're a learning child of God, come back home to the Lord and renew your commitment to Him by repenting of whatever sin may be in your life. And keep in mind that in both of those instances, it requires making a choice. When it comes to becoming a Christian, you make a choice. Just as surely as the people on Pentecost made a choice, 3,000, but there were many others who also made a choice, they turned away. And then, as far as rededicating your life to Christ, a choice is made. Come to Jesus as together we stand.